Welcome to the grand final of the Park Drive 600, a great final between John Spencer and Ray Reardon. And the final is the best of seven frames, not aggregate scores over three frames as in earlier rounds. Ray Reardon won the first frame 55-25 and we join the match at the start of the second frame. The winner of the first frame, Ray Reardon, breaks for the second. And the world champion John Spencer trailing by one frame to nil in this best of seven final. John, your way with that thing then. <laughs> Spencer hammers that one away and oh and he's put himself really in trouble. He must nominate a colour and if he doesn't hit it he loses the points. <laughs> Nominated yellow. Yellow is worth two, so that's pretty safe anyway. A fine shot. Ray ridden in play, having won the first frame. shot. Always evidence of a fine eye when you can hit a long shot like that. Blue. And thumping that down. Ray Reardon playing with tremendous confidence. Not merely the confidence of a man who's won the first frame, but the confidence of a man who knows he's hitting the ball truly. So many world-class players content to glide and tickle the ball down. Ridden is thumping them down. He's so confident his line is right. Well, there's a red on there. Twelve. The break twelve so far. his position isn't good he wanted to get a position on black it's unlucky 13 so it a safety shot oh no it a, a well 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 when I talk about a safety shot Ray Reardon confounds with a brilliant shot 20 well this is the sort of play that won Reardon the world championship in 1970 and still the break continues 21. with a pink lined up. <coughs> Down goes the pink and he's lining up the next red also for the centre pocket on the other side. And there's also one near the black, which is straight in line with this bottom left-hand pocket. He has a choice of reds. And since this one is near the black, he'll be... Well, it looks as though he may well be going for the centre one. No, deciding which is the better one. The one to the centre pocket. And a tremendous backspin putting him right behind black. Reardon really hitting the ball truly and accurately, playing with tremendous confidence and a slightly worried look on the face of John Spencer, who you can't see but I can see nearby. Thirty-five. There's the red, the black to follow. Thirty-six. The red 
is in quite a cluster with the pink among them. Uh, the black is easy enough, but the next red's going to need some thinking about. He'll probably go down about mid-table. There's a black open up there. Oh, a tremendous spin and screw on that. Well, this, he's got one lined up on the middle pocket and a, a possible long one. And it looks as a long... Well, that one would go middle or top. Top right. Super. A break of 44, only nine behind his own highest break of the competition, which he shares with Rex Williams. Only two. Behind. Well, it took its time. going down and this black is pretty simple this would make the highest break in the tournament so far worth a pound a point 52 at the moment unfinished black on 59 the highest so far a simple red in the middle pocket and the back for blue if he wants it. Again with these world-class professionals they don't always take the obvious ball. He's going for yellow which is only worth two but will help him to continue his break and maintain position on the next red. Everything going right for Ray Reardon at the moment. This is quite the best sustained snooker we've seen in the whole of the competition. 62. Again, taking up position on the black. And again, perfect position. up the next red before he puts this black away there's the pocket there's the black going down into it an easier line up on the middle pocket for the next red beautifully played break this played with great confidence and great skill blue if he wants it pink is also but blue is the most obvious. Getting in position for the next red, a choice of two. It looks as if he's shaping up for the near right hand pocket. And again, another position on black. 77. 77, and then quite a fantastic break by Ray Ridd. By far the highest so far. I'm still unfinished this black would take it to 84. Are we going to see a 100 break? It may well be premature to say that, but it weirdens form it's possible. Eighty-four. 84, the break stands at. Two reds on the table. Once again, the black is waiting. Two the break stands at one red on the table. A very definite possibility of a century break by Ray Ridden here this afternoon. Ninety-three needs the black for a turn. And he's on the cushion. He's on the cushion. Well, if he gets the turn now. He really deserve it. His position is not good. The cue ball is on this near cushion. And he's going for the seven that will make a hundred. But it will really be a beautiful shot if he makes it. Let's watch this ball. It's a beauty!
the applause tells its own story and Ray Rin chalks his cue and carries on with the yellow and if he clears the colours he'll make it a break of 127. The world record break the maximum of course is 147. He can't do that but he can make 127. Rex Williams holds it. Well, what a treat this has been. It's a privilege to have been able to watch this. A hundred and twenty-seven break if he pots blue, pink and black. And what a roar there'll be from this crowd at St. Philip's Club in Sheffield if he does it. Pink now and then, just the black. Surely he must do it. Black remaining and there'll be no trouble here. Bruce Donkin appealing for absolute quiet. 127 on. There she breaks. The crowd loved that and you heard them enjoying it audibly and Ray Rin loved it too. So Ray Rin takes a two frames to nil lead. And welcome back to the grand final with Ray Rin after that absolutely magnificent 127 break leading John Spencer by two frames to nil. Spencer has opened the scoring in the third frame with a break of 19 and leads 19-0 as we join the game. Ray Reardon in play. Ray Reardon's batting and has a black to follow. One. Red and black about to go on its spot. So black in attendance for the next scoring stroke. Nine. beginning to hum a little. They're wondering whether 16. Ray Reardon's off on another of his blockbusters. Blue will go down the same way. 17. Unless he decides to come down the table for pink. No, blue is too good to miss. Brings it right back with backspin. On. Pink is also on, depending on what position he wants next. He's going for pink. And puts it down. And the next red is on. Reardon playing brilliantly. At the height of his form, Ray Reardon. <coughs> Black is there and the Reds. It's interesting to see what he'll do with the Reds because the Reds are all together, six of them, in a tight little bunch. Well, he doesn't disturb them. He's going to pick one off the end. Well, there's the shot. He can he can pick any one of t at least two there. There's one of them, and the black again is on. And 
and again Ray Reardon building up effortlessly a big break Forty six. The black again on. Oh. There are four reds on the table. Reardon's break stands at fifty three. It's going down. a simple yellow a possible pink the yellow goes down the cue ball comes up to kiss black and move it a little near the cushion and this is the crucial point in the break. He needs a good shot to keep it going now. <laughs> now pink is on the yellow spot. So he puts it as near to the spot as he can get it. It's Oh, he's done it. Well, it's green, brown or blue. Two reds close together, but of course, if he can get behind either of them, he's in position to part. He's going into pairs for Brown. Some sit down, tries to break up the two reds, but can he do anything from the cushion? Oh, he's an inch off the cushion. Now, he broke up the two reds, but neither of them is in line with the pocket. It's going to need a good shot to put it down. The break is 61 at the moment. Again, a crucial shot for Reardon. And he's missed it. A break of 61. Well, if the, if the crowd is disappointed, it's because it wasn't another turn. That's 61 is still the second highest break. In fact, Reardon has got the three highest breaks. 127, 61, and sharing 53 with Rex Williams. This is John Spencer in play with a lot to do. And he missed the black, and it looks as if he might almost have conceded his third frame. A long way to go with a number of balls on the table, but and if John Spencer goes three frames down, Ray Reardon only needs to win the next for a whitewash. Bang. John Spencer must realize, of course, that he's playing Ray Reardon, who is having an inspired spell. It's very hard to play against. That sort of fall. I miss the blow. Sixty-two twenty. Ray Ridden leads in the third frame. John Spencer needing some snookers. There's one of them. With the cue ball nestling against the pink, the yellow ball is the nominated ball in sequence, and he'll go from this left-hand cushion across to try and hit it, and could pot it if he hits it in the right place. And he's going, almost going in off, but it's good enough. It gives John Spencer a chance of a snooker. He's near enough to the yellow ball to do more or less what he likes with it. And with his cue ball. 20, <laughs> <laughs> Trying for a snooker behind black and brown. Not a bad one. Uh, I think Ray Reardon can get through there. Only tenths of inches in it, but it's clean enough. 
And the biter bit. No, John Spencer can see the right-hand side of the yellow ball and with a bit of screw can probably hit it full. Deciding to take that off the cushion. The play now, Spencer to go for snookers, Reardon to pot. Spencer 42 points behind and only 27 on the table. Two blacks would put him back in contention. for a snooker behind black. No, he's not going to make it. In fact, if Ray Reardon wanted to be really brutal, he could almost do the same to Spencer. Spencer in play, 42 points behind and two frames behind in this best of seven final for £600. And that ball rolling into the pocket. And stopping on the edge, so it's a setup for Ray Rian. Well, John Spencer might not have wanted that yellow ball to go down for himself, but he certainly doesn't want it to go down for Ray Rian and its curtains four yellow 64-20 and Ray Ridd looking very much the winner of this third consecutive frame <coughs> hit, hit it Ray John Spencer still trying, he needs something like three snookers, in fact he does need three snookers to get back in this game. He is in fact more than that because he's 44 points behind and there are only 25 points on the board. This means that he has to find another 19 points from somewhere. Three blacks would give him 21, but this is all academic. It's unlikely that he'll be able to work out snookers. And in fact, he's left the green. <laughs> he's left the green. I've no doubt Ray Reardon will accept with alacrity and come back up the table here for Brown. Coming up, off the lip of the little pocket. Blue, which is the next ball, is top left so he'll go back down there or even come with backspin well this is a long pot for Ray Reardon but as we've seen in these earlier frames he's not afraid of really hitting these long ones he really slams them pink It. Whether John Spencer will consider it worthwhile going on, I don't know. Yes, John's still trying. It's an impossible situation for him. And if he... And he concedes it. The third frame. To Ridden. So Ray Ridden leads by three frames to nil. There's a score, Reardon 76, Spencer 26, the important score, Reardon leading by three frames to nil, wants just one more frame for the match. So everything going right for the Welsh boy, Ray Reardon, leading by three frames to nil and 18-9 as we rejoin the match in the fourth frame. 
Well, what's John Spencer going to do now? He's 18-9 down. Reardon leading 18-9 and by three frames to nil. And John Spencer badly needing to string together a big break and win a frame. That's a nice shot. Oh, that's bad luck. That really was bad luck. That shouldn't happen to a dog and certainly not to a dog that's three frames to love guy. left it for Ray Ridden. One. Blue is on, pink is on. In fact, if he takes pink, he could scatter a few reds. Better not scatter them into a pocket, though, because it becomes a foul stroke. No, he's open one up, but he's in the middle of them himself. Yes, he can see one of them, I think. Seven. Obviously, he doesn't think that one will go. about to make his decision, an interesting one. He's, he's not going to use that red ball as a cue ball, he wants to know the angle at which to hit it to achieve his purposes. And again, he tries to shunt it home but doesn't do it. Rian leads 25-9. Rian staying comfortably in front and needing this frame for the match in 600 pounds. John Spencer, we still wait a touch of the world champion One. Spencer with magnificent flair who could give us a century break. But on his form tonight, he's not played as well as we've seen John Spencer play. And he's come up against a Ray Reardon who's probably playing as well as he ever played before. Brown is worth four. Moving up the table. A red ball and a, a black to follow. Now he's moving down the table and getting behind blue. Six. that down so hard it almost came out of the pocket again in protest and right up to the cushion a good shot good shot he's looking at the red masking the black on behind his right hand simple enough. Now let's see if he can see the black beyond the red. You see the red near oh. the pocket. The pink is much more likely and he's lining up the pink for the middle pocket. Down it goes and I think he wanted to see the red this time and use it. Now the black may well be in the way. 18. The break is 18, the black is indeed in the way, and there's nothing much else on. But he's still going for that red. It'll be interesting to see what he hopes to do with it. He still tried to pot it. A break of 18. Uh, While well, Spencer leads 27-25, and we must remember that if Spencer can only keep ahead by one point. It's still good enough to win the frame. It's not aggregate scores that matter anymore, as they did in the earlier rounds. Were it aggregate scores, of course, John Spencer will be miles behind at this moment. 
a second frame score of 127 to 1 by Reardon. So John Spencer can keep this final very much alive by keeping ahead of Ray Ridden. Spencer and I wonder if the merest tickle will put that red into the middle pocket the red over the middle left hand pocket it just it just needs it. no he's trying a double and he does it stands at the moment it's pretty close <coughs> moving gently and slowly up the table to take a red Five. the one on the extreme right gently does it and six well, this black, pink, or blue. Blue he's going for. Again, the long shot, a sign of a confident player. He's prepared to take the long straight shot and wallops it down. <laughs> Nothing more likely to demoralize an opponent than the sight of a man so confident he'll take what to push with the hardest colour and belt it down and there goes another red. Well, <coughs> 37 27 at the moment and Ray Ridden at the beginning of what could be another of his big breaks. He's already had 127 and a 61 in this match so far. Blue he's going for and puts it down and kisses the green. Moves the green out of the way three reds on the table 17. the break of 17 no great proportions as yet but Reardon moving remorselessly onwards oh, he's missing. so John Spencer with the pressure really on Ray Reardon leads by 42 to 27 in this fourth and what could be deciding frame 42 27 with john spencer behind and in play and needing points that's one of them. A good shot. well the balls are well scattered and apart from the green are open here's the back and even green is sufficiently far away from the cushion for the cue ball to get securely behind it. So, possibilities for a cool-headed Spencer. Oh, he's missed it. Hey, Spencer. Well, John Spencer's expression as he moves out of shot telling its own story looks pretty disgusted. Quiet, please, ladies and gentlemen. And that could well have One. been the death rattle of John Spencer. A yellow for Ray Reardon. One red remaining. And that's the ball he's lining up now. Three. Final red goes down. Four. Black is nominated. 
down goes black and one suspects one suspects that Ray Rin is moving in for the kill Fourteen. green there's green the hardest of the walls remaining on the table Ray Reardon moving remorselessly in for the first prize of 600 pounds Brown it's 58.35 at the moment already it's virtually beyond John Spencer's reach but Ray Reardon is missing well 58.35 is the last score from Bruce Donkin the referee 35.58 that's a margin of 23 Oh, he did it, and he's almost in off. So there's 22 on the table. He's 23 behind. He leads, needs at least one snooker on any of the four balls remaining on the table, but he won't have the ground. Ray Ridden puts it down. And the blue has only a short time left on earth. One suspects. Pink and John Spencer, I think, now kisses goodbye to 600 pounds. And Ray Reardon sees his family exchequer boosted by that amount. So Ray Reardon will put down this black and finish with a tremendous flourish. And then this, the crowd at the St. Phillips Club will rise to this young Welshman from Tredega. There it is. There's the final score, four frames to nil for Reardon, and so the winner of the Park Drive 600, Ray Reardon. So Club Secretary George Ferry presents a cheque for £600 to Ray Reardon, and he also gets £127 for the highest break. A good afternoon's work for Ray Reardon. And that's the end of this Park Drive 600 tournament. The winner once again, Ray Rin. You've seen some of the world's greatest professional snooker players in action, and you've seen some wonderful snooker. So from St. Phillips Club in Sheffield, goodbye.